Vladimir Putin paid an official visit to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea on June 18 to 19. The Russian delegation included two deputy prime ministers, ministries of defense, foreign affairs, transport, and health, as well as a deputy minister of defense and the governor of Primorsky Krai, which borders China. Welcome everyone, in today's video, we're going to tell you Russia's new crazy military alliance just revealed. Aside from Putin's talks with DPRK leader Kim Jong-un, the Russian team held a plenary session with their North Korean counterparts. Three documents were signed, including an interstate treaty on comprehensive strategic partnership and two intergovernmental agreements. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. One focuses on the construction of a road bridge over the Tumen River, which serves as the border between the two states, and the other on collaboration in healthcare, medical education, and science. The Strategic Partnership Treaty includes a promise to quickly give military and other aid using all available forces to the other party in a state of war caused by armed aggression, in accordance with Article 51 of the United Nations Charter. Furthermore, it requires the parties to avoid from entering agreements with third countries that could jeopardize the other signatory's sovereignty and security, and it calls for coordinated steps to strengthen both governments' defensive capabilities. The statement pledges the Russian Federation and the DPRK to increasing trade, creating advantageous conditions for economic cooperation in areas such as customs and finance, and promoting reciprocal investment initiatives. Putin used both his visit and an article published the day before in a North Korean daily newspaper to express his gratitude for North Korea's support in Russia's war against Ukraine, to praise Pyongyang's anti-American policy, and to blame the US alone for the Korean Peninsula's tensions. He stated that Moscow opposes the UN's decision to extend the sanctions regime against the DPRK. The signing of the Strategic Partnership Pact, particularly the decision to add a provision requiring mutual military aid in the case of aggression, has major implications. It will result in more intensive military technical collaboration, which will almost certainly translate into increasing shipments of North Korean equipment and ammunition for the Russian military operating in Ukraine. This view is backed by the fact that a deputy prime minister in charge of the defense industry, as well as the defense minister and deputy defense minister in charge of military procurement, are among the Russian delegates. Delegation. Furthermore, the deal indicates that Russia will boost the North Korean military's technological development, particularly its rocket, space, and, most likely, nuclear components. This will escalate the military danger to South Korea and the U.S. troops stationed there. Furthermore, it is possible that a military alliance with Russia will encourage the North Korean leadership to heighten tensions and strengthen its preparedness to conduct operations that might spark a full-fledged confrontation on the Korean peninsula. The signing of this paper shows that Moscow feels it would benefit from the commencement of such a conflict, or that it is willing to bear the danger of it occurring. The deal should also be considered as a gesture that confirms the Kremlin's fundamental turn away from the West and towards Asia, not just in terms of foreign policy but also in matters related to shaping Russia's identity. It is worth noting in this context that the Russian Federation is the successor to a 1962 agreement signed by the Soviet Union and the DPRK that included provisions for mutual military aid. However, Moscow repealed this provision in 1996, even at the end of the 1990s, when the Russian political establishment was was already deeply dissatisfied with its relations with the West its opposition to NATO's military intervention in Kosovo represented a symbolic breakthrough, proposals for an anti-Western alliance with North Korea were made only in marginal political and intellectual circles. Prior to Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Russian political discourse portrayed the DPRK as an example that Russia should not emulate. Even while it was at odds with the West, Moscow's increased cooperation with Pyongyang, as well as the Kremlin's accompanying rhetoric, are perfectly aligned with Russia's ideological concept of breaking away from Western tradition and forming an anti-Western alliance of traditional civilizations. The composition of the Russian delegation suggests that in practice, the summit will result in increased collaboration in the military technical, energy, and healthcare sectors, as well as the extension of transportation links. It should be underlined that Russia formally adheres to the UN sanctions imposed on the DPRK. According to official estimates, the annual amount of trade between the two states is only $35 million, but it increased ninefold in 2022 and by 50% in 2023. However, it should be expected that the true number is significantly higher. Any potential expansion of trade relations will almost certainly benefit North Korea more than Russia. 
Moscow intends to utilize Putin's visit to North Korea, as well as the agreements reached during the trip, to exert political and psychological pressure on the West. This is because these developments raise the prospect of heightened regional and global instability while also promoting the notion that North Korean resources will allow Russia to prolong its war with Ukraine or possibly contribute to the aggressor's victory in that battle. As a result, they increase pressure on the West to accept Moscow's requirements for ending the war in Ukraine. Furthermore, these moves are intended to terrify America's Asian allies, particularly Japan and South Korea which both directly and indirectly support Ukraine. This increases the cost of the policy and the risks associated with it. Beijing's measured response to Moscow and Pyongyang signing a strategic partnership deal is noteworthy. It is safe to presume that Putin informed the Chinese leader of his intention to sign this treaty during his recent visit to Beijing in April. China sees the implications of this deal as uncertain. On the one hand, it will assist Russia in its battle in Ukraine, while also posing a new difficulty for Washington, which is beneficial to Beijing. Nonetheless, the increasing risk of escalation on the Korean peninsula might spark a full-scale confrontation in Northeast Asia, potentially involving the United States. This, in turn, is a scenario that China is currently trying to prevent. According to stolen documents obtained by Politico, Belarus provided modern weapons to Armenia's arch-opponent, despite the fact that the two nations were allegedly friends in a Russian-led international defense agreement. The cache of information throws new light on Armenia's announcement this week that it will leave the military alliance, a significant shift that may undermine Russian President Vladimir Putin's power in former Soviet republics. Armenia is on the verge of a historic shift towards the West, increasingly looking to Europe and NATO for security after decades of relying on Moscow. Armenia has been embroiled in a long battle with Azerbaijan in the South Caucasus area at the strategic crossroads of Asia and Europe, which frequently escalates into full-fledged war. The decision by Belarus, a close Russian ally, to sell modern military weapons to Azerbaijan between 2018 and 2022, giving it an advantage in a series of conflicts with its longtime foe, would be viewed as a painful betrayal by Armenia. Belarus and Armenia are both members of the Collective Security Treaty Organization STO, a post-Soviet military alliance established in 2002 and commanded by Moscow. In theory, members are obligated to defend one another if assaulted. Azerbaijan left a forerunner to the bloc in 1999. On Wednesday, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan declared that his government will initiate the withdrawal process from the bloc, stating that its members were not fulfilling their contractual obligations but are planning a war against us with Azerbaijan. A collection of more than a dozen letters, diplomatic notes, bills of sale, and export passports obtained by Politico reveals that Belarus actively assisted Azerbaijan's armed forces between 2018 and 2022, when tensions with Armenia reached their zenith. The services provided included updating outdated artillery equipment and delivering new equipment for electronic warfare and drone systems. That's all for today's video. The documents include letters from the Belarusian State Arms Export Agency to its own military industrial firms regarding orders for cutting-edge artillery targeting equipment for Azerbaijan, as well as correspondence between the two countries approving the purchase of Groza S counter drone mobile warfare stations for Azerbaijan's military. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button to avoid missing any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching. And see you all soon.